Hello everybody, my name is Peter, I am CEO of Packard Vision and I am happy that I can welcome you at this presentation where we are going to discuss why and how is deep learning substituting algorithmic methods at tasks of visual inspection and quality assurance. In our company we are heavily working with deep learning and we tackle the visual inspection projects with deep learning but when we discuss our approach with customers some of them are skeptical and some of them see benefits of strict algorithmical methods and they are afraid of using deep learning and on a practical example we are going to discuss what are the benefits of both approaches? We prepared two, two examples. So first example is project of inspection of pills. The goal is to find out whether all the pills are the same, are correct, and that all the pills are in the correct shape. They are not broken pills and pills which should not belong to the set of correct pills. As you see, this project is very well solvable with algorithmical approach. One would probably solve the project with following steps, like first setting up the correct light, that it's uniform and it prevents shadows and reflections, setting up, setting up the lens of the camera, so there is no barreling and first steps are about achieving the great image and in the next steps one would implement the algorithmical approach i think it's quite obvious how one would do it i would do it in the following way that i would check that the image is really rectangular that there is no barreling and then i would do two steps first step is recognition of edges for actually finding out where are the pills and then, then define algorithm which goes from top to down and when it first hits an edge there probably starts a pill and when it hits the second edge then there is the end of the pill right and one could measure one could measure whether the pill has the correct length and second when we already know where the pill is one would calculate the average color of the pill right but what could be the difficult parts let's have a look how it would probably look like such approach okay so first one would do the edge detection it needs a little bit tuning until one finds out the correct setting There should be clear edges, there should not be any noise because the noise would for sure heavily influence the algorithm. Maybe one need to play with this, we are trying to put and to add some scaling. Okay, so finally we are getting some, some maybe usable result. Mm -hmm. So now we, we see that at least in the second row, in the second row, we would already be able to detect to detect the beginning and all end of the pill, and we would be able to measure the pill, and this pill would be probably detected as pill which is shorter, and this pill, this pill again would be detected as a, as some different pill. But we see that this algorithm would at the end work. And the advantage of this algorithm would be that we would exactly understand why it delivers the result, whether it's good or whether it is bad. And if we get some false positives, we can exactly say why it happened. And be the same with false negatives. So these are the advantages. The disadvantages are 
clear too. You know, the the result is heavily dependent on the conditions, on the light conditions. If the light conditions only slightly changes, then maybe the edge detection would st start to fail. Uh, we see we see noise. Noise can happen uh, because of because of uh, some dust and. The, the, this noise can very negatively impact the algorithm because if we think about it, if the if the algorithm works like that, it goes from top to down, and it hits some noise, for example here, then it would think it's a it's a it's an edge, and the second edge would be detected completely wrongly. So we, on one hand, understand uh, why the algorithm answers like it answers. On the other hand, despite of being clear and exact, it is not really robust. Let's think about it. What happens when there would be another pill which has the same length but is maybe wider? Or what would happen if the pill would probably maybe have the, ever the same average color but in reality the color would be would be different. Uh, we need to add some tolerations for the average color. Uh, we need to add some tolerations for the edge detection because, because of shadows and stuff like this. So at the end, this algorithm may work, but may not be really robust. So if I zoom it up, the algorithm can be at the end quite complicated uh, and it could be time-consuming to create such algorithm. Such algorithm must be done by someone who understands the logic of this algorithm, who can use the algorithms, uh, who is engineer in this field. And the algorithm works for the specific, for the specific task. task. If, the, if the task needs to be a little bit different, the, it may happen that the algorithm has to be completely rewritten. Altogether, it may be costly. Um, costly because of the time of engineering. If we compare it with the deep learning approach, it works differently. One needs to capture images, select images which are defect-free, and then train maybe some anomaly detector, set some, some threshold, and then the work is about validation, about validation of the results. It is clear that the deep learning does not provide exact answer why it sees that something is anomaly. On the other hand, from some statistic, one can very clearly see that it, it may be, at the end, much more robust and easier to use. So if we compare the result from the anomaly detector to the algorithmical approach, we see clearly that the deep learning approach is straightforward and quite clear. It clearly says where it thinks there is a defect without any specification how to find it. So one could, let's say, compare it to such a situation that if we take a random person from a street and we show the person a couple of images and the person is able to understand it and answer correctly whether the next image is uh, defect-free or whether there are defects, then it is a good project for deep learning. So the process of training a project is much more easier. From our experience, it is much faster because when, when we do proof of concept uh, of various projects, we usually have results in, in minutes or maximally in hours. When we were using algorithmical approaches, we needed our engineers to spend much more time. And at the end, at the end, it was costly because, well, there are projects which are not solvable. And if, if the engineer spends two days of developing algorithm and at the end it is not solvable, or at the end the customer does not order it, then it's lost loss of two days of engineering work and of course of money. With deep learning, one can have the proof of concept very quickly, very quickly, and therefore one can have the answer whether the project is feasible or not 
very quickly. So it is reducing the risk and it gives much, much faster first results. And from our experience, the results are much more robust. We don't need to care so much, we need to care, but not so much, about the perfect lens, about perfect lightning, and it works anyway. The drawback is, of course, one needs a powerful computer. One needs a computer which is able to run the training on GPU. Uh, one needs powerful computer in production too, because the deep learning is usually a much more computationally demanding task. And therefore, if we need to have the quick decision in production, then we usually need to have stronger computer with GPU. And of course, this can, this can add some costs. On the other hand, it can save costs and it is saving cost of the engineering work. All right, so let's have a look quickly on another project. The project is about finding hair in jelly and uh, the jelly is food. So people don't want that there are worms and hair. And yeah, again, the tuning of the, algor of the algorithmical approach is possible. One can work with edge detection and then check for edges because hair usually creates edge. On the other hand, there is a lot of false positive if we compare this this image with the edge detection, we see that we would need actually to add some filtering and so on. And well, again, it is it is feasible algorithmically, but it is demanding. Again, we need to engineering knowledge of algorithm, and we, the engineer would fine tune the algorithm for exactly this specific task. And if something would change then probably the algorithm would be completely rewritten. On the other hand, deep learning approach simply learns on few examples how hair looks like and is able to find it with a high confidence level. So from our experience, we see that both approaches has their pros and cons, but we and actually our customers prefer the deep learning solution over algorithmical and some time ago it used to be like this that customers wanted to use deep learning only on tasks which were not possible to solve with traditional algorithmic approach but nowadays it has shifted nowadays we see that our customers love to use deep learning approach even if it's solvable algorithmically. And we do the same and the advantages are clear, much less work, faster prototyping, faster proof of concept, not so many visits in the plans and robustness, which leads to higher customer satisfaction. Thank you for your time and I'm looking forward to your questions.